Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. We begin tonight with a developing story surrounding a drug search at a home in South Fargo. Law enforcement may have been camped outside the home for several hours. It's in an area of Fifth Avenue and 17th Street South. We're told that a call came in to Red River Dispatch around noon and it had something to do with drugs. Now, not long ago, a woman was seen in handcuffs, but at this point, there's been no name given, no word if a charge will be filed. We were told that several people were inside when police served a search warrant. We'll keep you updated here on valleynewslive.com. Day 7 of William Haynes' trial resumed this afternoon with testimony on the timeline of events when Savannah Gray Wynn disappeared. Hain is accused of being a co-conspirator in the murder of 22-year-old Savannah in August of last year. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley joins us now with the very latest. Bailey? Mike, Andrea, Detective Phil Swan was the first to take the stand this morning. Taking jurors through the day, Savannah Graywin went missing in the days leading up to Brooke Cruz and William Haynes' arrest. Now, prosecutors lay, later played an audio recording of the third consensual search of Cruz and Haynes' apartment on August 20th. Swan says before that search, Savannah's family told detectives to look inside the bathroom closet because there was a fake wall leading to a hidden space, saying they thought Savannah's body was there. Is it possible if we take a look in your bathroom? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can look what anywhere. What we're trying to do is just kind of eliminate any arguments. Yeah, that. absolutely. And just since you're here, I'll go ahead and open up the whole house to you. Yeah. I mean, just, uh, yeah, you go right ahead. Right. You, I can and I know it. other officers have. We just wanted to. I can move that. You can look back there. Now, from earlier testimonies, we know Savannah's body was hidden in that bathroom closet the previous day before it was moved to a hollowed out dresser. But Detective Swan testified that on August 20th, after three searches had been conducted in less than 24 hours, police didn't have any concerns about Brooke Cruz and William Hain playing a part in Savannah's disappearance. Now, after the jury left the courtroom, the defense asked the judge to give a verdict today citing a precedent case and saying the state didn't prove Savannah was still alive when Hain entered the apartment. But the judge ruled that the jury will be the one to decide William Hain's fate. The judge also allowed the defense to bring in Jennifer Robinson, a fellow inmate of Brooke Cruz, who was introduced yesterday as, and she'll be allowed as a witness. Robinson claims that Cruz told her that she strangled and killed Savannah herself because she thought that Hain and Savannah were having an affair. Mike, Andrea. Thanks, Bailey. The trial resumes tomorrow morning at 8.30 with Jennifer Robinson most likely taking the stand, followed by closing arguments. One man was taken into custody this afternoon after police say he led them on a high-speed chase that started south of Glendon. Officers say it started with a routine traffic stop. They say when the suspect drove into Dilworth, a Clay County deputy used a spike strip to deflate three out of four tires on the man's vehicle. For safety reasons, officers stopped the pursuit in Dilworth. The suspect eventually lost control of the vehicle at the intersection of 2nd Street and NP Avenue in Fargo. No, there was no danger to the public. There was nobody injured during this. Um, like I said, once we hit the higher, higher population area, we did discontinue the pursuit for the safety purposes because we were, uh, we were getting into more traffic and, and more people and things like that. Unfortunately, this driver made a very poor decision after that and continued driving. The male suspect is in custody at the Cass County Jail. The crash is still under investigation. We've settled into more fall-like conditions. Not bad, I suppose, if you're ready to give up on summer. Hutch, should we give up on summer right now, and what's the weather going to be like tonight? Uh, it's looking like this uh, early onset of fall could even become winter for some fairly quickly. So the showers tonight, not bad, I guess. We do have passing sprinkles working their way through the FM area right now. Heavier showers in Lakes Country and a few rumbles of thunder up north. If you're in the Detroit Lakes area and Park Rapids, these showers are moving to the south and east at 35 miles per hour. Southeast North Dakota, a few heading your way, Richland County, as well as Ransom County. Maybe some thunder in Walhalla this evening. Here's a look at your forecast planner. For Fargo, temperatures slipping into the 40s. Our chance of showers decreases after about 8 o'clock. In Grand Forks, we could have passing sprinkles, but by and large, we'll spend most of the evening in the 40s. I'll have details on your overnight forecast, and we'll look at the area's first chance of flakes here in a few minutes. Yes or no, Hutch? Should we give up on summer? I, I, I have. I've gotten the uh, snowblower tuned up. Okay. All right. Thanks. 
The number of teens vaping is skyrocketing across the country and is being called an epidemic. Becker County is one of the areas here at home seeing how serious the problem is and how the trickiest part about this epidemic is that you might not be able to tell that your child is doing it. Valley News Team's Melanie Palmer takes a look at what some schools are doing to combat the issue. So far this school year, we're only in week three, and we've dealt with kids as young as the ninth grade, a handful of kids actually, who are getting in trouble or have had them in school, in their car, or in class. It's a problem educators are facing head on, vaping in the classroom. Have you ever seen it? Not in the classroom, but often school grounds, yes. Mark Olson is a senior at Detroit Lakes High School. He says he doesn't see fellow students vaping in the classroom too often, but that may be because it's just plain hard to see. They can have their, their vape pen in one sleeve and they can, um, you know, put their arm up to their mouth and suck the smoke out and then blow it into the other sleeve. Angie Horner is a drug and alcohol counselor at Detroit Lakes High School. When she returned our phone call, she was eager to talk about what's going on at the school. She thinks one of the reasons more teenagers are vaping is because of a misconception that vaping is safer than smoking cigarettes. But it's not just Detroit Lakes dealing with this issue. Just down Highway 10 at Lake Park Audubon High School, they're seeing the same thing. It took years to realize the harmful effects of cigarettes. With vaping being so new, we truly don't know the health concerns. Mary Merchant is a principal of Lake Park Audubon High School. And she tells us they have definitely seen an increase in vaping. But she says they're constantly looking to raise awareness of the dangers. And they're taking this vaping epidemic very seriously. Seriously. Having possession of a vaping device is a misdemeanor, so then we do refer that to law enforcement. And this issue goes beyond the classroom. Both schools we talk to say parents also need to be further educated. The counselor at Detroit Lakes High School says some parents even buy their kids vaping devices. So what do parents need to know? These smoking devices can come in all shapes and sizes, and they can even be disguised as tools of education. In Detroit Lakes, Melanie Palmer, Valley News Live. While in Detroit Lakes, we also talked with a number of tobacco stores. They tell us vaping is extremely popular among uh, younger generations, and the most common smoking device used is the Juul. Last night's fire at a Moorhead house is being ruled arson. The home is located near Concordia College on the corner of 5th Street South and 8th Avenue South. Firefighters found flames on the first and second floors when they arrived, as well as the south side of the house. The home was unoccupied at the time and was set to be torn down. If you have any information, you're asked to contact the fire marshal. The phone number is 218-299-5433. One person was arrested for DWI after a crash in Polk County. Police say 42-year-old Jeremy Burwell of Grand Forks and 21-year-old uh, Brady Scallett of Thief River Falls crashed into each other at an intersection in Keystone Township. Scallett was treated for minor injuries. Burwell was not injured but was arrested on suspicion of DWI. A Fargo man has been charged with terrorizing, aggravated assault, and reckless endangerment after allegedly threatening to cut a woman's throat. 30-year-old Tyler Wirtz was driving around Morton County with the victim when he became upset about something his ex said to him earlier in the day. The victim told police that Wirtz was high on meth and kept getting more upset. She says Wirtz hit her with his elbow several times inside the car and told her he was going to kill her by cutting her throat and then pushed her out of the moving car going more than 40 miles per hour. The victim was taken to the hospital with multiple injuries, including a fractured skull. Police arrested two young men for allegedly robbing a man at knife point when they were trying to sell him drugs. Authorities say 19-year-old Brennan Hutchins and a 17-year-old boy from Fergus Falls had been in contact with a 24-year-old man from Frazee so they could sell drugs. When the Frazee man arrived at the home in Fergus on Monday, the two young men uh, allegedly took $400 in cash from him. Police eventually chased down the suspects and arrested them for aggravated robbery and second-degree controlled substance. A Minneapolis man was arrested after running from police in Bemidji, then crashing into a tree and vehicle. Yesterday, 25-year-old Donald Negron was driving in the city without his lights on. When police tried to stop him, he took off, reaching speeds of 80 miles an hour. He was eventually arrested on multiple citations, including third-degree DWI. Three other people were also in the vehicle. One was taken to the hospital with four injuries. The other two ran from the scene. 
The West Fargo Fire Department is warning residents of a phone scam that's using their identity. Someone, presumably a scammer, has been calling people in the metro, posing as a fire department representative and soliciting donations. At this time, the West Fargo Fire and Police Departments are not involved in any phone-based fundraising efforts. If you're unsure if a call is a scam, you should contact police. Later on Valley News Live at 6, this morning's sunshine helped warm up walkathon participants. How much they raised coming up later. Up next, he may be gone, but not forgotten. Details on an honorary degree for Prince. You're watching Valley News Live on TV, online, and on the go. Always on, wherever you are, whenever you need to know. Valley News Live. You're watching Valley News Live on KVLY, your hometown NBC station. During SUV season at your local Northland Ford dealer, get special closeout savings on a 2018 Ford Explorer, the best-selling SUV of all time. And as the temperature drops, stay comfortable and connected. With heated seats, heated steering wheel, voice-activated SYNC 3, and tech to start your engine from anywhere. The best time to save is now. During Ford's SUV season, get 6000 in total savings or lease a 4x4 Explorer for just $299 a month. Only at your local Northland Ford dealer. It's great getting 11% off of everything at Menards, especially when we're tackling a big project like updating our living room. We're saving on all of it, from the stone veneer fireplace to the area rug. You can get it all at Menards, and the 11% savings keeps us coming back. We saved over $300 in our living room and can't wait to start our next project. Your next project starts right now with 11% off everything at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Savings are here and they're bigger than ever. The big event is happening now at Unclaim Freight Furniture. Everything is on sale with 20% off. Plus, get your choice of four years no interest financing or 15% bonus savings. Shop our biggest savings on best-selling styles like sofas only $349. And reclining sofas up to 48% off now, just $647. Save up to 40% on five-piece dining sets, only $599. Six-piece queen bed and collections now, $799. These savings won't last long. Don't miss the big event at unclaimfreightfurniture.com. I'm Kelly Armstrong, candidate for Congress, and I approve this message. I'm Kirstie Armstrong. I want to talk to you about what kind of man my husband Kelly Armstrong is. Kelly is a lifelong devoted North Dakotan. Family and community service are deeply important to Kelly. As Senator, Kelly has been a true leader. Kelly leads with his heart, he gets results, and he always strives to do the right thing. What Kelly Armstrong the man means to me is what will make him the best representative for North Dakota. Beautiful, energy efficient, and easy cleaning replacement windows. Windows Plus. There was plenty of enthusiasm from kids at Longfellow Elementary in North Fargo today. They got a chance to shove the books aside for a while and take in the fresh air and morning sunshine. The Longfellow PTA was behind this walk-a-thon. The young people in hourly increments could walk, run, or jog around a course specially set up for the event. They gathered pledges to raise money for special school programs and projects. Actually, it is so much better than what we used to do before in selling candy, which was not a real great healthy option. But um, I, I like the fact that kids are outside that entire time they're walking. Actually, some of them choose to run the entire time. They love it. This is actually one of their favorite times of year. The fundraising target this year was the same as last year, $18,000. Looks fun out there. Yeah. Another massive beef recall. What local stores carry the brand and what you should look for coming up. And we started the day out with some mighty frosty conditions in Langdon and Boston. Both saw morning lows of 30 degrees, 30s elsewhere as well. Today we warmed up nicely down south. A lot of 60s there, mid 50s across Minnesota. More wet weather and for some white weather details are next. <laughs> 